I have been playing The Witch 3 on Death March for the first time. It's going great. I actually think this is the best way to play the game, no lie. If you're new to Death March like I was, or just want some tips, then here is my guide for the Death March difficulty. Uh, let's go. Let me know in the comments any Death March tips that you have that I missed for this video. We'll start with, I think, the biggest hurdle and the most noticeable difference for Death March, and that is healing is critical and it's also extremely different in Death March. With Death March difficulty, you don't automatically heal when you meditate. You can't just like lay down for an hour and Gerard will have full health. You need to have food or drink and the Swallow Potion. Swallow is your main healing potion and you should be using this whenever you are either about to die or just like really desperate for healing. The issue with Swallow is that you do have such a limited amount of casts and you will have to meditate and have alcohest in your inventory in order to get that back so you want to save those crucial potions for the important encounters or when you absolutely need them in the other situations where you know you're out of combat you just need some health food and drink is your best friend except for alcohol you want to visit merchants as much as possible and stock up on food items and make sure you've got plenty with you at all times once you do have some skills available to you you can get the gourmet skill which is actually op and if you slot this it will mean that a single food item will last 20 minutes rather than 10 seconds. So that'll prevent you from having to get as many food and drink items from merchants so you can save some of those crowns for more important things. And you will also find food and drink just by like looting peasants' houses. So absolutely go and do that. Make sure you loot as many houses as possible. Sun and Stars is a great skill for the same reason. So during the day, you will get some health regen. It's not much, but any health regen is important in Death March. And during the night, you get stamina regen. These are really the two main ways that you will heal and keep your health active throughout outside of combat as well as in combat unless you're desperate then you can pop swallow but for the most part you're going to be using that the best way to heal though is just to avoid damage entirely and that is where quen comes in quen is essential in the beginning of any death march playthrough as enemies deal huge amounts of damage and you can often get one hit or even just like chunk most of your health from just like the most basic and random enemies and really you want to avoid this as much as possible and in a lot of scenarios especially against monsters and while you're trying to learn their move sets there's something that I have struggled with because I haven't played the game on this difficulty before is that I didn't realize how much I didn't care about the move sets of enemies and would just like you know attack through them regardless whereas on death march you really can't do that and Quen will protect you from initial hits or if something attacks you from behind like you know just to make it more difficult I guess I'm forcing myself to play it with the new camera that was released with the next gen update so I can't see things behind or around me you should obviously you could change this you know if it is an issue for you but you will take hits from behind sometimes and Quen can help you you know not take that as actual damage exploding shield which is the first quen skill is also really good for that as well so it will explode and like push enemies back when quen is broken and it will get broken all the time and essentially you just want to keep this active as much as possible and once you have got the upgrade points you can get active shields which can also be used as a heal so active shield when it is active and when enemies hit it it will give you some vitality as well so just another way you can get some of that health back the biggest hurdle outside of healing is absolutely going to be leveling up and getting skills now white orchid where you start you absolutely want to do literally every single thing possible in white orchid to get as much experience as possible do all of the question marks make sure you set your map to all so you can see all of the question marks do everything in white orchid this will not only give you experience materials xp alchemy things all sorts of stuff but it will also just help you level up like get experience in the death march difficulty mode level up get some skills learn how to play the game on this difficulty and get used to the different rhythm because it is a slower paced rhythm in death march i have found you also want to be bargaining for any contracts that you do have there is one contract in white orchid but make sure you're bargaining for contracts crowns are really important in this game mode so you can actually repair your gear and buy things that you do need like food and drink make sure you have a trophy equipped as well on roach that does give you xp whether it be for human or monsters or what have you it's just good to get that little bit extra of experience and points of interest like the ones in white orchid that you do find they will give you like really really solid rewards practically always they're also super short it's just like one you know monster encounter what have you and often these are like better rewards and side quests just from some of the XP you get and you just get all those materials and stuff and they're so quick to do. You'll often find like Witcher gear as well and other diagrams and useful items on them as well. So make sure you do those points of interest. Once you've collected all that good stuff, it's time to upgrade your gear. Now the Witcher gear is OP and still is OP in the Death March difficulty and with the next gen update despite some of the changes that they have made. The new My Rewards gear helps you fill the gap until you can get the Witcher gear. So if you do 
to sign into your account, go into the My Rewards at Yennefer's place in Vizima, you can grab the new My Rewards gear like the White Tiger set. It's a fantastic level seven set of gear that will tie you over until you can get that Witcher gear. So it's just good to like fill that void rather than you know spending tons of money on just like random other gear that you might find. Also like loot everything for those reasons. So, you know, you want to have those crafting components and alchemy things so that you can upgrade and craft that witcher gear once you are able to in the game the more preparation you put in before you even get into a combat encounter is absolutely well worth doing and speaking of preparation that is our next major tip so before any witcher contract or any major boss encounter monster encounter what have you you do want to learn what they are weak against and the beast area is super important for this in some of the like other difficulties you can kind of ignore the beast area like you know some witcher contracts will force you to read it and find out what you know you have to use but you can just kind of ignore it but here you really can't you absolutely need to have the potions and oils and bombs and what have you that are weak or vulnerable to that monster type so that you can deal that extra damage because damage numbers are really important on death march especially in the early stages of the game and while you're doing all that looting and exploring you will find these you know diagrams and things that you can actually craft the potions and oils and bombs and those things and the more that you have and the earlier you can get these oils and things the better you will do in those combat encounters with those monsters it's also important to to meditate before those encounters to make sure you've got as much potion stock as possible even on quests like if you're like in the middle of a quest and you're out of potions just like meditate on the ground it, it literally doesn't matter save often as well like before these encounters or after these encounters as well i can't tell you how many times i've like done even just like a point of interest and then gone to the next one and being like oh that looks hard i'll give it a shot and then died and then my save file was back even before the first one so you got to make sure you are saving a lot make sure that you're well stocked and prepared to actually take on the challenge that's ahead of you and when you do get into that combat encounter let's talk about some combat tips so keep quen up like we mentioned earlier quen is super critical but the other signs are also really valuable to use as well and speaking with the beast area we're kind of putting everything together here in that you want to use the signs that are most effective to the monsters you're fighting say yurden for wraiths that'll like slow them down when they're inside the radius axe is really good for ghouls to like stop them from doing you know their random little like attacks where if you hit them you take damage axe is also great to stun enemies to like stun lock like one enemy if you want to focus on another enemy you can kind of do this a little bit in some encounters by like focusing one enemy if you attack them especially monsters a couple of times they'll jump backwards and then you can use that to like get them away from the pack a little bit so you can like focus on that enemy it's like worth noting that in terms of its combat flow and against monsters especially you can't block if you block a monster you will get stunned but you can dodge monsters and you should be dodging it's also worth pointing out that the difference between dodge and roll so if you just like press the dodge button you will dodge and you can like sidestep but if you hold block and then dodge you will like roll so you do like a full roll rolling is really good against larger enemies so you can get out of their like flight path wherever they're like traveling to but dodge is really good for smaller things parrying and blocking humans are absolutely well worth doing humans is like the easiest enemy in the game and still pretty much the easiest in death march because you can block and parry them to your heart's content and really focus on that combat flow and play defensively and you know if you do get into encounters that are too hard just run away Geralt runs away from his problems all the time. You know, his responsibilities as a father, his relationships, everything in between. Geralt's used to running away, so why not run away from the enemies as well? <laughs> Good luck on the path, guys. Check out my Witcher 3 tips video if you want some more general stuff or any of the other Witcher 3 content I have on the channel. Thanks for watching this video till the end. Thank you to our members for supporting the channel. My name is Norza. I hope you have a great day.